Hey there, this is the travel guide for your World War II tour across parts of Europe. I'm going to give you our seven day itinerary for our travel to the World War II areas, including Normandy, Berlin, Munich, and Brussels. I will tell you our hotels and give you some restaurants that you can eat at after a day of touring. This is a very thorough guide for places to see for the World War II tour across Europe. So I will link all of these in the description box below for you. Grab a cup of coffee or a German beer and let's take notes. Since 2019 is the 75th anniversary of D-Day and our son loves World War II history, we decided to make this trip. We started our World War II tour in Munich since that's where Hitler's reign began. And we stayed in the Sheraton Munich and it was a little far out like near office buildings. And I don't recommend it to stay if you need to pop into a restaurant or you like to walk around at night after you've gotten back to your hotel. So I am going to link one to a living hotel. It's near the Markt, and it's a lot um, more walking friendly for you. When you travel to Munich, we suggest starting out at the Marienplatz and going to see the new town hall. There's usually a demonstration there or some group singing. There are lots of touristy things you can do there. And there's also a church if you go under this little um, entrance near in the Marienplatz that you can ride up the elevator and then you look out over this very narrow balcony and just see gorgeous views from Munich. At the Newtown Hall's clock tower, you can see at 11 a.m. and noon, this little cuckoo clock kind of thing with a little Bavarian themed movement of things inside the clock. Uh, it's just cute to see. After you have done the touristy thing and walked around, you can go to the Hofbrau House to have a famous beer there. It's not my favorite personally, but it's a touristy place to go and you kind of have to check it off your box for having seen the inside of it. Hitler did parade through the Marian plots years ago and there are pictures all over the internet that you can have for that. We highly recommend a sweet treat or a warm coffee on a cold day at the Cafe Frischt Schmaltz Noodle. The snack is a Schmaltz Noodle and it's got lots of sugar on top with just a hint of cinnamon. It's just perfect. The line was out the door when we went to get this sweet treat and it is a local favorite so that's why it was so crowded on the inside as well. The next day we decided to go to Dachau outside of Munich and you have to take the S2 train to get there. It's probably about a 30 minute train ride and then you get on a little bus once you get once you get out of that little train station. When you do get off at the train stop and you're waiting for the bus, there is a little bitty really cheap five and dime store across the street. I don't think there is like a 7-Eleven. Like my husband needed a little sock hat because it was so windy and cold that day and we were able to get it really cheap in that little store. It's just a little bus. Be prepared for lines of tourists to get on the little buses that take you about a 10 minute drive to Dachau. When you get off the bus in Dachau, you will see the little park entrance and it has like two stalls of very clean bathrooms and then they have a tiny uh, cafe if you have to eat something there. I would give it about two and a half hours at least because it is the most well-preserved prison camp but you get to guide yourself around so many cool areas and it's a vast park um, and then there's also a little indoor l-shaped building museum that will take you quite a while to go through it if you like to read most of the things you may want to look into a dark history tour and i will link that below also in the description box it will talk more about the third reich and the world war ii with hitler and those kind of things that afternoon we hopped on a train and rode to Berlin and it's about a four hour train ride and it is beautiful scenery. This was the most beautiful scenery out of all the train rides we took. And this train had the best amenities. We had our own little waitress who came and this is the type of regional train that I am going to be talking about for the rest of the time. And it is the Deutsche Bahn, the regional train system. You will pass by the Volkswagen factory. My husband loves those kind of cars and it is the largest factory in the world for Volkswagen. We highly recommend the tour company with locals. You get to choose your own guide based on their bio that you look out look at online. We chose Dave. He was a cool looking guy and we had two teenagers traveling with us so we thought that would be perfect and he was an excellent 
tour guide. He was friendly, he was informational, he gave us enough pauses so we could process everything. We did about five miles of walking just in the morning history tour. We had a history tour like for four hours and we did stop for coffee and sit for about 30 minutes. On that tour, we went to the Checkpoint Charlie, we did the Brandenburg Gate, the Berlin Wall, and there's a monument area that you walk through. It's amazing. He tells you all these behind the scenes stories and lets you touch where bullet holes are still in some of the buildings. They're great monuments around Berlin. It's a more modern city than Munich, um, but just as beautiful and just as perfect. He also took us to Hitler's old headquarters, um, and then we took a three hour break, went back to our hotel, and then met back up with him for a food tour at night. Here's a travel tip for food tours. You get so much local fare, local food, local history, as well as years and generations ago of history if you take a, a food tour. Know that in some food tours, you are going to have to pay at each little restaurant where you go. Like in Italy, we paid in advance for the food tour and never paid for it along the way. But in at this food tour, you have to pay along the way for each sampler that you get. And then also we had to pay our tour guide in cash. Well, we didn't realize that we were gonna have to pay for the food, so we ran out of our cash really fast. And it was a Sunday night when we were looking for an ATM. They were everywhere, but they were also all empty. <laughs> and it was freezing cold, and it even started snowing on us while we were looking for um, an ATM after it poured down rain on us as well. So be prepared, have a jacket with a hoodie. The next morning at 6 a.m., we took a seven hour train ride to Brussels and know that you might need to look at the train station or the metro stations uh, map the night beforehand so you know which train to take to get you to the major train station. You always wanna take the Deutsche Bahn for the regional trains, okay? <laughs> That took me forever to get it through my head. <laughs> That's why I'm trying to help you out before you go. A travel tip for traveling on a train in Europe. Know that if you are making a connection, like you have to go to a certain city and then hop on another train to get to Brussels or any other city for that matter, know that there are delays along the way, just like airlines have. You might miss your connection. So give yourself time or know that if it's the last connection at night, you might be in that city and need to find a hotel last minute. But the train systems do have free Wi-Fi on most of them and I'll talk about that later as well. We were very delayed trying to make our connection to get us to Brussels. And so like we had already missed the time, but when we got to the station, they were holding the train for us as well as for everybody else in the station. And everyone was so crowded trying to run. Just be prepared if you have kids, hold on to that suitcase, hold on to your hand and push. It's okay. <laughs> I have a video about picking out the best carry-on suitcase. Those are the kind of suitcases we always travel with. The reason why is because we travel to Europe a lot and to get from a train station to your hotel, you have to walk several blocks. When we get to Brussels, we had to walk several blocks to get to the Grand Place. And we were very thankful for the wheels on our suitcases. The Grand Place is iconic Brussels. It's beautiful and there is one hotel on the four sides of that grand place and we got to stay in it. It's a very minimalist boutique hotel. I will link it below and it was very affordable. We heard from a local about a French fry place for Brussels French fries called Freakland and I will link it below. Very walkable from the grand place. There's a Starbucks right there on the grand place. We also had a beer at the Guinness Book of World Record most beers on tap restaurant down below these little steps. I will try to find that to link it for you as well. We also did a chocolate making class. We wanted so badly to go to Bastogne where the Battle of the Bulge took place, but we just did not have time. So we just did the touristy things. Uh, there's the Adamonium, Adamonium, I believe it's called. I will link all those below too for you. So the next day we took the train to Paris and then switched trains, which took like almost an hour for us to go down the level, to actually read the sign and figure out which train to actually take. But we took the train from Paris to 
by you. There are people who will get on a bus first thing in the morning in Paris and drive on that bus to Normandy and then spend just a few hours in Normandy and come back to Paris. Do not do it. Stay in Bayou, stay in Normandy. The Normandy beaches remind me of like uh, Cape Cod or Kennebunkport. Just beautiful. You can ride bikes all along there. It's very open and spacious and tourist friendly. Our tour guide loved history. He started talking at eight in the morning <laughs> and did not stop until five o'clock at night. But I will let you know the company that we used for our tour guide in Normandy. Okay, so we stopped from Paris to Bayou and then our tour guide took us, picked us up in Bayou. So we got to Bayou late afternoon and at night and our, we stayed in an Airbnb that had a washer and dryer. If I was going again, I would have taken like a laundry detergent packet that I now know about and washed some clothes to get us through the rest of the trip. But anyway, our Airbnb guy told us about a pizza place, but it was closed. So we went to this one restaurant called the La, La, La Boucherie or La, it was a meat place. It was decked out in cow hide, cow stuff everywhere. It, they served steak. There were tons of people there. Like the restaurant was full at nine o'clock at night. A lot of the pizza places close at 9 p.m. at night. So the next day we went to the pizza place. It's called Pizzeria Freddo. Bayou is a very, very walkable town, like not even a mile, I don't think, within the square area from our steak restaurant to where our Airbnb was to where the Pizzeria Freddo place was. Highly recommend this city. There was a little um, cafe. It was like Boulangerie Saint something. It was right by our Airbnb. My fingers were greasy after eating the croissant. That's when you know you will have a real fresh croissant in France. And then at La Boucherie or the steak restaurant that I'll list below for you, the steaks were great. I would go up two levels of doneness when you order beef in Europe. I had butternut squash soup. It was fantastic. And then of course, red wine in France. I had to have some of that and it was delicious. Prior to visiting Normandy, I had no idea of the catastrophes that happened on D-Day in 1944. It makes me so proud of all the people from different countries who fought for this, uh, to freeing the people over there. And for our freedom, I just, I feel like this generation and younger do not have a clue about what y'all went through or what anyone has gone through of loss. I definitely want to go back there. I want people to stay on the beach in Normandy. There is the D-Day restaurant. It's a yellow building. Awesome food. When you visit Normandy, you'll probably go to Utah Beach and Omaha Beach, but don't stop there. Go to the Memorial Cemetery and make sure you're there near four o'clock when they play taps and they lower the flags. It is such a beautiful cemetery. This is where the beginning of Saving Private Ryan took place and it's on a cliff almost overlooking the ocean. Gorgeous views and oh, amazing. We highly recommend the tour company that I will list below. I've mentioned before. Y'all, there are museums on every corner almost. There are sites, there are bunkers that you can walk into. When you visit Normandy, do not miss the Pont du Hoc Ranger Museum or monument. This is a vast monument of the battlefield all these bunkers that are very well preserved. You can walk inside the bunkers. Amazing, amazing history there. Great place for kids to just run. Our teenagers just left us and we never saw them. It was so large of a place until it was time to go. It almost looks like the surface of the moon from where the bombs and the craters of the bombs were. And there's one bunker on the cliff that looks like a scene from Star Wars and it has like a dagger, the monument has like a dagger through a book. I'm not quite sure about the history of that. I could not find any pictures of that. If you have a picture, our tour guide had a picture. I can't find any picture of it on Google. So if you have a picture, please let me know so that I can put it in here sometime. I will definitely go back to Normandy. Please don't ride the bus. Get a private tour guide while you are there. It is worth it, oh my goodness. Because of all the museums, you do need that whole day and the next day to really see all of Normandy and go into an antique store here or there. 
we just did not have time because we were only there during our child's spring break. So we had to hit the road. But let me tell you about the trains. We bought Eurorail passes and they were $330 each. Now we did buy the first class ticket and that's just $21 extra per person. But we, on some of the trains, we did not reserve seats, but on the first train ride or the second train ride, we got our own little room with a door and a table. It was very quiet, but the trains are very quiet. When you buy a Euro Rail Pass, the Euro Rail Pass is good for five legs and you have to use it within 31 days or something like that. Um, and then also you will go to Euro Rail, no, Euro Rail .com or Rail Europe .com. And either one, one, you go and do the research for the legs you need, and then it will spit you out to buy tickets on the other website. It's kind of confusing, but they're the same thing. It's just different links. They're like sister companies. Okay, and if you buy the first class ones, in some of the train stations, the regional Deutsche Bahn train stations, you will get to go to the first class lounge if you get there early. And it's just like free drinks and a, a little snack that you can eat on, but it's quiet. It's not in the train station per se, clean bathrooms. We have had success with all bathrooms in the train stations in Europe. They're all clean. Just know that you might need some coins because on some of them you have to pay to use the restroom because there's a person, could be a man, who is gonna clean your area when you leave the stall. <laughs> Okay, I hope this was a good starting point for you to know where to hit along the way as you travel across Europe visiting World War II sites or museums and different cities. Let me know if there's something you thought of that I did not list below and I will list that link if I can find it. Thanks for visiting.